George Bruno and the 21 Report. We're at the 21 convention, the final event of the decade, and I'm talking with Rich Graham. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be yeah. here. How did your presentation go? I think it went well. Um, it was uh, well received with the people we talked to afterwards. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of questions, and we did a follow-on workshop after the talk, and we had a, a really good turnout at the workshop um, for doing self-defense and, and things like that, mm-hmm. and uh, just cover, covering some of the combatives and getting the guys to start working with each other and and doing some drills to uh, to just really develop self defense and just working with other men, you know, working through those kind of situations. Yeah, you know what I mean. I was in early on the presentation, then I had to come up to the studio. But I remember you talking about three levels. Three, there was a three. Yeah, uh, explain was, those. So the the talk we did was talking about building your confidence through fighting or building your confidence through violence, yeah. right? And the premise of the talk uh, was mainly on the kinetic side. Yeah. Like actually, you know, men building their uh, self-esteem, right? Building their confidence through doing things like martial arts and whatever and getting comfortable, you know, squaring up with another man, you know, and, and defending themselves. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we need them to go out and get in street fights and stuff like that. But there's a certain part of our nature, you know, you're small, you're young, and you're growing up and you're playing cops and robbers and you're, you know, playing swords with sticks and all that stuff. It's in our nature, but it's being so suppressed by the current um, state of, of the country socially. Yeah. Right. So the first thing about fighting for your own confidence was talking about the kinetic side. Yes. The next part was talking about the psychological warfare that we face. Yes. And fighting for your confidence in the psychological space. Yeah. And then the last part, the third, was in the spiritual realm. Yes. Fighting for your self confidence um, uh, in the in your spirit, you know, and uh, making those good decisions there. So mm-hmm. those were the three aspects of it. And is this applicable to any human being? Yes. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How does uh, someone make this a regular part of their life? So there's certain things we can do, like drills. You know, you can do this in each one of those categories. But like, if you're going to do the kinetic side again, you could join a martial arts gym. You know, you could start doing um, your fitness training and gearing your fitness training toward your martial arts. So. When you go to work out, you're not look, working out just to strictly look good, yeah. right? To shape your body in a way, there's now a purpose. My purpose is to be able to fight and defend myself and build my self-confidence that I can stick up for myself and not allow myself to be bullied or manipulated due to lack of self-confidence, right? And um, and then along with that, you know, uh, working, doing the martial arts in our In the uh, psychological side of the house, there's different things we can do as far as setting goals and achieving goals, uh, voicing what our goals are to other people. So let them hold us accountable and not lie to Mm ourselves. Right. Um, In the spiritual side of it, you know, you can practice daily affirmations or, you know, you can pray on things. You can, you know, um, start to break some of the strongholds in your life and start making better ethical choices or moral choices, you know, when you find yourself in that position where you're kind of like on the fence of what you want to do versus what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of this can be very simplified when we look at it. Are the decisions I'm making getting me closer or further from my goal? And if they're getting me further from my goal, then these are probably the wrong choices. Mm -hmm. And looking three to five years down the road are the choices that I'm making right? Getting me closer or further from where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And if they're holding me still, that's getting us further Mm -hmm. because everything in time and everything in society is, is driving forward. Other business owners and other entrepreneurs and, and people in the business workplace, everyone's driving forward. So if I stay stagnant, I'm actually losing ground. Mm -hmm. So um, some of those questions and some of those things I find for me personally, it's easy to get clarity on what I need to do and also keep me focused and motivated on, on moving forward. Yeah. So it's purposeful drilling. It's not just a purposeful training, not just, yeah, I I trained today. Yeah. There's a reason behind it. Yeah. We only have so much time. And when you, when you really get locked in on a goal and you really get focused on, on, in, in my case, building my business. Yes. Right. I don't have time. Yeah. I don't have free time. Yeah. So 
if I'm going to allot time to do something, it needs to have a purpose, right? But that also allows me to stay on track, right? And for other people who have more free time or spare time, then um, maybe that's not as serious of an issue for them, or maybe they don't look at it as serious, but at the same time, mm -hmm. like where are you spending, you know, where are you spending your, your man hours, right? Mm -hmm. Are you watching, you know, three hours of Netflix every night? Or do you watch a Netflix show but you're mm -hmm. reading for two hours? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, are you building yourself, right? Or are you just entertaining yourself? Mm -hmm. And there's time for entertainment, but at the same time, if we're trying to build a strong individual, yeah. right, your, your time is extremely valuable. Yeah. You have a unique background, and there are people that are watching this program that don't know you. Okay. Share a little yeah. bit about your background. So my background, I... I Joined the Navy after high school and went straight into the SEAL teams. And I did that for about six years. And then due to a medical condition that I developed on deployment, uh, I was basically pushed out of the Navy and I couldn't hold my SEAL status anymore due to uh, not being able to pass my physical. So now I teach. So now on the civilian side, I work with, um, you know, the individuals and I work with law enforcement agencies and contractors and we train them in anything from firearms training to we work with the canine units we do uh, combatives and fitness and that's where our program the full spectrum warrior kind of encompasses a lot of that and then we do a lot of personal development stuff as well you know helping build leaders and and strong teams working with men and women yeah yeah actually we work a lot with with women as well is that right yeah women on the range women on the mat. Yep. Is there a difference? Versus women on the range versus the mat or women versus men? Women versus men. Yeah. Uh, what I find is there's a lot of women who want to shoot. There's a lot of women who want to learn to defend themselves. A lot of times entering that environment, they feel like they're going to be judged or they feel like they're going to be out of place with all the men there. So a lot of times when we do have the women, uh, a lot of times it's on private events. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of uh, clients that we have come out to our training facility and we do private training experiences for them, which will be anywhere from the, the firearms training to the combatives and the fitness. A lot of times we, we encompass all of that into those training seminars, mm -hmm. but they want to learn. They want to know yeah. how to defend themselves. They want to be confident. They own firearms. They want to be able to protect themselves, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of that you know, the same protecting nature that the men have for their wives or their family, you know, the women have for the children. Yeah. Right. And we also have women who are trying to get into certain job, um, job environments that need those qualifications. Sure. And they come to us to make sure that when they go to do that, they can pass those qualifications. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Tell me about full spectrum warrior. So Full Spectrum Warrior has been in my training philosophy. I have multiple companies, and the one thing that was constantly bringing them all together was the philosophy, right? So uh, we started out when I got out of the Navy was uh, went into personal training while I was trying to figure out, you know, because I wasn't planning on getting out. I kind of got pushed out, and I was like, crap, what do I do now? Yeah. So I was like, well, I'll just be a personal trainer while I figure things out, and the company started as Trident Fitness. And then I was a Thai boxer for many years. So I started working and training at a Thai boxing gym while personal training. And through the Thai boxing, I met a bunch of police officers who were working at the sniper school and also uh, working with a lot of the SWAT teams in the tri-state area. So I then got invited to come out and oversee some of their training, see if I could add a couple tips and, um, and things of that nature. And I did, I went out, I went to the sniper school, I went and worked with some of the assault teams and they liked what I had to say, they liked my training style and that started turning into more of a thing. And one of the big things that I was constantly, you know, getting with a lot of these guys, not just the, uh, the police officers, but I was working with firefighters as well. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of guys who were out of shape, who had a hard time doing different movements of maybe going from standing to kneeling or a prone position, mm -hmm. right? Because maybe they had bad knees or whatever. And I, I started talking to them about what in my mind I envisioned as a full spectrum warrior, which is, 
you can't just get good at shooting the gun and neglect the fact that you have a very physical job. Yeah. You can't put all of your uh, reliability in a piece of equipment when you are the foundation that the equipment is driven from. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So our foundation is us first. Yeah. So in the full spectrum warrior training philosophy, I was coaching these guys on the aspect of we need to be healthy, right? And in our health allows us to then go like health versus like diet. Mm -hmm. And then that brings us into the fitness realm. And the fitness is in my aspect is movement, whether we're Mm -hmm. moving weight, whether we're moving ourselves, right? We have to have the ability to move. Yes. With the ability to move, we also need to have the ability to defend ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? And that brings us into the combative side of the house. Once we have a foundation in health, fitness, or movement and combatives, we can now integrate weapon systems that we can now utilize as our modern day sword, Mm -hmm. right? And that would be mostly firearms and other technical Mm -hmm. things and technology and whatnot, right? But in my aspect, the, the technology comes last. Now, most people come to me at the technical side because they want to learn to shoot better, Mm -hmm. run their equipment better and all that kind of stuff. And then what we wind up doing is reverse engineering everything. Mm -hmm. They come to us wanting the final product. And Mm -hmm. it's like, once they're there, they're like, oh man, I can't really move. Okay, well, let me show you some movement techniques. And we developed something called our combat mobility system. So we started to work with these guys to get them to move more efficiently, right? Have more streamlined movements based on their limitations. Mm -hmm. And you got to reverse engineer that. Well, to do this, we need to set up a fitness routine. Maybe you need to lose some weight. Here's a health program. You know what I mean? And, um, but then with all that, we have a whole leadership program to develop the individual on the personal side to build them into a team player, a leader, a good communicator, Mm -hmm. right? Because otherwise we're just going to train a meathead and that's not what my goal is. My yeah. goal is to build, you know, proactive thinkers, um, not only for the family, but also for the for the tactical workspace. Mm-hmm. That was a lot. Is this is this for <laughs> uh, is this like one on one or is it uh, groups? Is it once a week? Is it a boot camp? Uh, a lot of our training is customized uh, to the actual client. Yeah. We have some courses that we run that are open to the public and will maybe be a one to three day open public class Yeah. Um, in all those different topics that we're talking about. But a lot of times what we will do is we'll go in and work with a different, with a police department, with their SWAT team or with their patrol officers. And based on what that department needs at that time, I'll uh, develop a curriculum specifically for them. Then we have a lot of clients who will come out to do private or small group training, Mm -hmm. right? And they'll come out to our ranch. We have a 55-acre ranch in uh, Central Florida here. And they'll come to us. And, you know, that could be anywhere. We've had people come from one day. We've had people come for 10 days, right? Just depending on what it is that they want Mm -hmm. to train. And then, again, we make a – we have a bunch of course outlines that are, like, general guidelines of topics. But each client that comes out, each group we work with, we take that general guideline concept – and we custom tailor it for the specific needs of that client. Do people graduate from the program? Is there a certain competency level? Do I have to pass a test? How do you know when someone is success, uh, has successfully completed the course? I don't know if anyone's ever, everyone ever really completes because this is a lifelong process. Yeah. We're always, I'm still trying to improve myself. I'm sure. not a finished product. You know what sure. I mean? So, what we call it is sustainment training. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when the police send me their snipers, I'm not certifying their snipers. Mm-hmm. I'm going to challenge their snipers, offer them different uh, training opportunities and continue to sharpen them into better snipers. Mm-hmm. Right. Not that I know everything, mm-hmm. but I can take them from where they're at and then challenge them and make them better. Okay. With the individual, a lot of the things that we can do is we can measure it visually just by when you show up. It's like, Okay, let's see where you're at. Yeah. I'm going to give you a couple ideas so you're being safe and yeah. you don't hurt anyone. But let's have you come out to the range. Let me see how you want to shoot, right? And we watch them shoot and we see how they do. Be like, okay, cool. I watch how they move. Let's take a look at this. Here's some movement exercises. Here's some fitness exercises we're going to do to do correctional. Like there's things in your movement that are off. Let's correct that. When we make the corrections to the body, right? And then we also make corrections to their um, shooting fundamentals. Mm-hmm. We watch the results on the on the target. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it's not just making them shoot more accurately. 
It's giving them more spatial awareness, more body awareness, allow them to start moving in a 360 degree environment like they would in their in their home, right? In the in a parking lot or anything of that nature. If they're a concealed carry holder, you know, a, a lot of the other firearms instructors, and I'm not saying they're wrong, it's just we just have a different opinion on mm-hmm. on how we visualize developing someone. Mm-hmm. Many people say if you're gonna learn to shoot before you should ever shoot and move. Right before you should ever be turning with a gun in your hand and doing any 360 thing, that's saved, that's reserved for the experts. Yeah. Right. So my argument to that is, so you you pretty much never wind up in a position where you have the opportunity to train in a 360 degree environment because you're never ready. You know what I mean? But the problem that I find is, but that person already bought a gun, and they're carrying it every day anyway. So for us to say you have to perfect the three-point shot in basketball and be able to hit eight for ten uh, three-pointers in a row consistently every time, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Before we teach you how to dribble and move the ball up and down the court, like I think the two of these things need to be developed at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's not just improving their accuracy, but it's improving their weapons handling skills and their competency and from uh, familiar out. Oh familiar ality safe why, why can't i say that word familiar? it's the end of a long Dude, day this one I was know. killing me this earlier today too this one fucking word has been crushing me right you get what i'm saying i do right so we get them more familiar with the gun we yeah. get them better at handling the gun yeah right and give them better awareness of uh manipulating this piece of equipment mm-hmm. at the same time that they were developing their fundamentals to shoot more accurately And what happens is you see this amount of stress come off and you see all the dots getting connected. And I've had police officers come out and train with us who have been on the department for 16 years. And they're like, holy crap, I've learned more in the last two days than I have in 16 years. And it's not that I'm, you know, necessarily bringing them anything that is so new that I invented as much as I'm finally giving them the opportunity to move with the weapon the way they should be moving and we're connecting the dots between their fitness routine, um, our mobility and movement system, mm-hmm. along with the fundamentals of shooting. Yeah. And now they're starting to understand how to actually move through a space with their weapon out of a holster mm-hmm. confidently. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's different mm-hmm. ways we can measure it. Right. But it's not just on the scoreboard. Right. It's also in their their um, building their own confidence and and uh, I'm not even trying to say that word again. Right, <laughs> right. It's building their confidence to, to to move in that space. Okay. You know what I mean. Sometimes I watch this YouTube channel called Police Activity, and okay. it's, I'll tell you, it's all it is is just body camera videos, yep. and it's interesting watching them move. Yep. Video doesn't lie. Yep. Do you use video? To uh, show men how they're moving and, and yeah. playback and all that. Yeah, we film the we film the clients many times doing the training mm-hmm. because what what we'll tell them they're doing, they can't see it when they're doing it. Yeah, right. And for us watching, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, but they're like that doesn't feel like what I was doing. So we film it. We go, well, look here, come watch this video, and then you can see and we can critique and and um, and look over that. One of the things with watching those police videos that you're talking about is you get to see a lot of natural reactions. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, in in our industry of, you never do this, Mm -hmm. right? Kind of things. And I break a lot of those never do this rules in our training because when we watch those videos time and time again, you see the natural reaction is to do just that. Mm -hmm. For example, walking backwards. They'll say you never walk backwards. And I'm like, okay, well I can go watch you know, 500 street fighting videos, and you're going to see hundreds of people at some point in time moving backwards based on the complexity of the fight. Mm -hmm. You watch these people, the patrol officers getting the exchanges, right? And you see them moving backwards, right? I see them moving backwards, and the percentage of times I see them tripping and falling, moving backwards versus them moving backwards and not tripping and falling is much higher of them not tripping and falling, but the risk is there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, well, just because the risk is there doesn't mean we don't do it. We understand the risk is there. That's why we train it more. Mm -hmm. But for you to take out an entire direction of movement from this situation, from the option, like taking away that option for them to move, 
in my opinion, um, I don't, I don't like to neglect that part of the training. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things like that that we learn from the videos, one for correcting the the students, but also going like, I know like safety practice says we shouldn't, but the reality reality of it is, you're probably gonna do something similar to this, mm -hmm. so let's fine tune it now. Mm -hmm. So when you actually go do this by reaction, we can do it better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there, we use videos for, many different aspects of it. So this is the, the second 21 convention that you're part of? Yeah, the first one was the, uh, the father's one. Okay. And what are your thoughts about the 21 convention and the direction you see it going in and your overall impressions? You came back. Yeah, I came back. I think that the, um, I think this is a, definitely a, a place that's needed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we see just the, the society really pushing back hard on allowing men to be masculine, yeah. right? And really just men being men, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And without having to paint all this stuff to be like macho uh, bravado, like bullshit, it's just, there's a lot of things that, you know, that are, is being pushed back against. Mm -hmm. And there's really no reason why it should be being pushed against. Sure. You know what I mean? And it's just get, at this point, it's just getting freaking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, so the the conference, I think, plays a very important role. I think there's a very important space for it. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, when I first started looking at it and watching some of the, the talks and just seeing some of the controversy behind it, my fear was for the convention that it was going to wind up swinging so far, the pendulum was going to swing so far that it was basically going to turn into the men's version of the feminist movement. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was like, I hope it doesn't go that direction. Right. Because it'd be very easy when we go, these people are so crazy, right? That it would go over here and the response is, is the complete other side. Yeah. So, um, coming here this time and, and hearing from some of the speakers and just seeing what the overall theme was, uh, I was very pleased to see that it wasn't that, Yeah. you know, yeah. because the last one, the, well, the first one I was at was the father's, uh, the, the father's edition. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well maybe this one's a little bit toned back because it's the father's edition, you know, well, let's see what the general public men's one is like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there, cause there's so much controversy online. and um, But at the same time, I came back because I believe that there's a lot of men who need to hear the stuff that was being taught. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know there's a lot of men who haven't had good father figures or have had the wrong upbringing who need to be led in a direction, right, that, uh, that needs that guidance. Yeah. I mean, I came from what I think is a good family and I still needed that guidance. Sure. I was still searching for that in my mid twenties, you know, almost till 30. Sure. And I'm still trying to build myself and improve myself. But even at the SEAL teams, right? I was telling someone this earlier today. I got to the SEAL teams looking for direction. I was just like this, this energy going all these different places that needed to be harnessed. And it was harnessed to an extent, right? <clears throat> but what I found when I was there was there's a lot of guys in the military that are really good war fighters, but they're still really lost individuals. Mm -hmm. So we got a bunch of broken dudes, lost dudes, coaching another bunch of broken dudes and lost dudes, right? I'm not speaking for everyone, but here's a simple example. You're in the military, you've been in the military for five years, 10 years, and you get your reenlistment bonus, boom, $40,000. And then what do you do? Next thing you know, the dude rolls up to work, with a new $60,000 truck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who's coaching this dude? Right. Why is a fucking grown man who's fighting for our country and all this kind of stuff, right, taking a $40,000 bonus check and putting himself $20,000 in debt yeah. plus interest? Yeah. You know what I mean? And there was a lot of guys who just didn't have that mentorship, mm -hmm. whether it was from a spiritual standpoint a relationship standpoint, you know, the divorce rate within the, the SEAL teams is like 80%, 85%. Mm -hmm. So who's coaching us on 
you know, like I'm not trying to throw our guys under the bus, but at the same time, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a, a desperate need for men to be leading men, right? To develop them into, uh, you know, their full potential. Yeah. Whether it's through spiritual, whether it's through finances, whether it's through relationships, yeah. you know what I mean? Cause we got the war fighting thing down. Yeah. You know what I mean? These guys are awesome at that. They're, they're, you know, great examples of a warrior culture, but mm -hmm. there's still so many other aspects to our life that brings in all this outside chaos mm -hmm. and stress and frustration, mm -hmm. right? Because there's no one coaching really effectively in those areas. I shouldn't say no one, but like generally speaking, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. was just my observation. I've been out for a little bit. Maybe it's changed, but yeah. So that's why I think this is an important conference because I think this provides something that can provide a lot of value to many men across the country. Mm -hmm. So the United States just had some kind of victory in the Middle East with uh, taking out some ISIS person. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. And was that part of uh, the Navy SEAL uh, operation? Honestly, do you know? I, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. I was here at the conference today when the headlines started coming out. So yeah. at this point, I have kind of just what everyone else has. Right. I haven't um, spoke with anyone or, or got any information on that yeah. other than what the headlines say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How can people find you? Uh, we're online. We have a website called fullspectrumwarrior.us. Mm -hmm. uh, soon we're launching our new updated website, which will be fullspectrumwarriors.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on Instagram, which is fullspectrumwarriorusa. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, those are those are two great spots to find us. Great. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, thank you thank for your time. Thank you so much. It. Thank Good you. Beer. What was your experience so far with the 21 convention? Oh, outstanding, outstanding. Professional, all across the board. Really good energy with a lot of people. And uh, I just like it because it's a very positive, uh, positive direction. This, uh, George, this, is a, this has been a first class event. It's fantastic, you guys are in a really tight ship. I've been to a lot of conventions over the course of my business career and I can tell when things are well run and when things aren't. And this is a very well run operation. I was very impressed. It's pretty incredible to see where Anthony's brought it especially from last year, which is my first year here, and to see the, the upgrades he's made, it's been incredible. I've got my notebook, and with every speaker, I've written down about two or three lines mm -hmm. under each of the speakers of just just the key prime stuff. That I got. That's good, that's good. Great. It's, it's very surreal, man. I'm yeah. really enjoying it. I'm happy to live in such an era where such a thing like this is possible. I have never seen a group of guys like this, a group of 200 men who are focused, squared away, they're working on their values, just never met a bigger group of wonderful guys. It's kind of neat, because I've been to a fair amount of conventions in my day, but you never see one where the guys like, uh, here you can just see Ed Lattimore talking to Tanner about boxing. Yeah. You sit down and then you tell your boxing experiences, everybody's kind of pinging off each other, it's yeah. nice. It has been fantastic and it's been four days of guys all on the same page, working in the same direction. Fascinating meeting some of the people, hearing their stories. You got, you got people traveling from other parts of the world to come here just to see yeah. some of the speakers. That's yeah. amazing. That's the thing that's impressed me is everybody here is very serious. Yeah. They're taking it you know, close to their heart. What a great convention. Thanks, George.